The following is a presentation of the Black Hollywood Live Network, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is Black Hollywood Live, phenomenal women. Featuring in-depth interviews with today's most inspiring women. Black Hollywood Live, Hollywood redefined. You're listening to Black Hollywood Live. And now, the host of Black Hollywood Live, phenomenal women. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Phenomenal Women on Black Hollywood Live. I'm your host, Ashita Andre, and with me today, I have a legend, a phenomenal woman, and just the beautiful, stunning Baker Beauty. She was on The Price is Right and the first African-American Baker Beauty. On Barker. The, Barker Beauty. I'm sorry, <laughs> Baker. Barker <laughs> Beauty, <okay>. excuse me. <laughs> In addition to being Mrs. Parker on the hit show Friday, who we love and remember, welcome to the show and thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, my dear. <laughs> Absolutely. You look stunning. Thank you. Very so good. I want to talk about your book, Backstage at the Price is Right, Memoirs of a Barker Beauty. Take us through this journey that we, that we only know just by watching it, but how did you get on the show? Oh, so glad you asked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, really. Actually, let me start first about, okay, the book itself was a journey. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and, and I do encourage people to write, to write your stories. Everybody has a story to tell. I don't care if you're just working at a little um, McDonald's or something, whatever, in life, as you go through your journey, everybody has something very important to talk about. So I do encourage people to write things down about their lives. But my book actually encompasses the 10 years I was on The Price is Right as the first African American model on that show from 1990 to 2000. So, and then, you know, of course, I do reflect upon my earlier age uh, a bit because it's, it's not really my uh, life story per se, but it, it, being brought up in Youngstown, Girard, Ohio, mm -hmm. Uh, is the reason I'm the person who I am today. You know, our environment, we are our environment right. for the most part. And being brought up in just a wonderful, loving family life and great community in Girard. And, you know, um, I was like a first among many in my realm in terms of even being in the, the Girl Scouts, first black Girl Scout. And I was also on the gymnastic team, first black gymnast on the uh, team in high school. And um, just um, in the homecoming court, different things of that nature, you know. So I say how befitting and how proper it should be that I would be the first black model on The Price is Right. So you were breaking barriers long before The Price is Right. I'm loving that. Yes, I was, you know. And uh, just thanks to basically my mom, I, and she's d deceased now, but she... Uh, she was just such a wonderful, great woman, great personality. I get a lot of my humor from her. Mm -hmm. And, of course, my dad, too. Good looks and all. What right. can I say? <laughs> my dad was fine black man, honey. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, and it just all kind of came together at some point. After I finished high school, I came to Los Angeles. I've never been here before. I just knew I wanted to be here, uh, though I was very fortunate that my uh, sister, cousin, Terry, and her mother had family had just moved here so I did ha have somewhere to stay because it can be very scary coming into this city not knowing anybody and um, I got involved in beauty pageants mm -hmm. and through that and through Mavericks Flat International and the manager was John Daniels who, the owner of the club he put a f uh, phenomenal f singing girls group together called the love machine mm -hmm. there were seven of us we were like Tina Turner Temptations Beyonce all rolled up and the one there is scantily clad, honey. We have platform boots this high. I mean, we, way before, now people are wearing them again, right? And um, people were wondering how we didn't fall off the stage. I actually had my little signature when we'd come out and I'd start when one of the songs, I'd do a cartwheel and a split. That was my <laughs> signature, girl. <laughs> I don't know if I could do that now. You'd have to literally peel me up off the floor. <laughs> oh, Lord, one leg would be this way, one leg that way. But being involved in that situation also 
helped lead me to being on the show, you know, and uh, the experience of the travel with the love machine. We were with Motown, actually, and the Miracles, Billy, when Bir um, Smokey had left, Billy Griffin was on the, in the Miracles and Pete Moore and all the other guys, but they wrote a song called Love Machine for us. <laughs> Not for them, but they took it to Barry Gordy. They said, Barry, man, we got a great song for the girls. Listen to it. And Barry's like, man, this is bad. This is hot. But you guys are going to sing it. When we found that out, we were just done. I mean, through and through, because the song relates to us. I'm just a love machine, and I won't work for nobody but you. Talking about our manager, right. John Daniels, a love and kiss and thing. It, you know, the rest is history. I mean, it could have just easily have put us on the map, but, you know, everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, um, one thing just led to another, and I traveled with another singing group called Destination over a period of time. We had a pretty big hit song out, Move On Up, a remake of Curtis Mayfield's song back in the disco era. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Loving her personality. Yeah. <laughs> it's early in the morning. I love it. Girl, always. <laughs> That's one good thing about me. I do have good energy. And I, you know, I always rise to the occasion. And I, I feel that, you know, my happiness, my energy, it does spill over to other people. And I think, I, I know I definitely got that from my mother. But like I said, the book was a work in progress. Yes, because you had a gag order for a long period of time, so right. for 10 years? It was seven, 10 or five, I put seven in there. But, right? <laughs> Sounds more dramatic. Right. Ten long years. Ten long years. I couldn't write. I couldn't say anything about Bob Barker's <laughs> cantankerous behind. But now the truth is revealed. Well, tell us a little bit about it. Tell us what some of the, the, okay. the, the issues that were going on. Well, all right. You know, all in all, it was a wonderful, great experience for ten years. I mean, I was so grateful. Uh, it just worked out perfectly. My kids, basically, my son Terrence, he's now 24. My daughter Cheyenne's 31. My stepdaughter Dior is 32. And they pretty much literally grew up on the set, which was a great thing for them. People were very warm and open towards the kids and the girls on the show. Diane, actually, uh, Parkinson, she befriended me. One of the beauties. Yeah, one of the beauties. There were actually, and, and also, aside from being the first African-American model on that show. I was also the first, fourth model added to the show because there had always been three models on that show for 17 years. It was 17 years before they put one of us on the show, okay? <laughs> it was <clears throat> definitely way past time for that to happen. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> so, um, Di but the thing is, Holly and Janice, the other two models, Holly Hallstrom, Janice Pennington, and Diane, did not get along. Mm. They had gotten along very well in pr pr prior years and stuff, but th some things just happened, and I, you know, I've never really got into it. And I've heard rumors, and I allude to a little bit in the book, but with you know, allegedly, that just some things that happened that kind of, you know, drew their attention away from you know the f friendship that they had, and just turned a little bitter. That's not that's an easy, nice word to say, bitter, but. Um, Diane and I were real close friends, so, you know, we confided in one another and told each other different certain things that, you know, we promised we'd not reveal during that time. Mm -hmm. But as time went on, I'm telling it all oh, now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Diane, she may not like it, but it's the truth. So, right. But, um, I mean, and she was wonderful. I liked Diane. She was a sweetheart. But as it were, she and Bob Barker were having a sexual relationship when I got there. Yes, they were. It was consensual. And we were happy. Bob was getting laid. Okay. Bottom line. You know how it is when you... <laughs> right. Mm, right. After... Oh, yeah, honey. Mm, was it good for you, too? Right? <laughs> I mean, down in that dressing room, some things was going on during the break. Some Bob had do not disturb. He meant that. But she had the backstage all-access pass to be able to go in that dressing room whenever. Wow. So we weren't mad at her at all. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> we were a little upset when the relationship broke off. Because Bob treated us all a little differently, you know, it wasn't the same little, just things. That that was the whole turning point of things that kind of started going with downhill. downhill with the whole show and the ambiance and the backstage and different things. We used to do a lot with Bob. He used to take us all out to dinners for uh, different uh, events when we were going to go on our little hiatus, maybe Thanksgiving or different things, and a couple of the staff. And 
a lot of that just stopped. And actually, he used to allow us to speak. He, you know, during the show, if somebody missed out on, um, or two people missed out on the um, the um, showcase, you know how they have the showcase, two people right, bid on it. Right. If nobody did it, we had some downtime, you know. So he come say, Kathleen, how are you? And Diane, your fans want to know Janice and da da da. We, all that stopped. Everything turned very differently when they broke up. And then, of course, when Diane left, she had done Playboy magazine a few times, and they kind of said, don't do it again. So, And there was a lot of pressure on her just there, and her relationship with Holly and Janice took a little toll on her. So when she left, she actually watched all the other young models coming in and auditioning and everything. And I think, you know, she was feeling a little resentful, and I think she thought that she was going to be doing more when she left and you know, career is tough in this town, you mm -hmm. know, for, I mean, there's a lot of blondes, 36 D cups running around here every day. Mm -hmm. So she decided she was going to sue Bob Barker for sexual harassment. She put it out there. She got her attorney and we look around and here, here, here it is. Bob Barker suing Diane Parkinson, suing Bob Barker for sexual harassment. Wow. We, we knew full well that wasn't happening. Bob was outraged. Of course he would be. And um, even though you do something and don't do it, when people put it out there, even if it is a, a retraction, even if she did lose the lawsuit, which she later dropped the lawsuit, it tainted Bob Barker's career in a sense where he was always known as the wholesome guy right. next door, the wonderful, <laughs> lovable personality and all of that. So people are now wondering, hmm, did he or did he not? Because he was married. <clears throat> no, he wasn't. Actually, he was a widower. Oh, okay. His wife, uh, uh, Mary Jo, uh, died okay. uh, a couple of years before I got there, actually. I never got a chance to meet her. She had cancer. But just to have that thing put on your head, that right. connotation, you know, that, like, people are suspiciously looking at him. Bob? I, I don't know. But, you know, that, that kind of started a whole snowball effect. And speaking of the snowball effect, and your situation <laughs> leaving the show was a little bit... Well... Died. It kind of changed it because you were you either the left or you were let go. Yes, and that's the story. So we want to get the truth from it you. It is really actually after ten years. Well, thing is, when I say the snowball effect, when we had to do tell a, a give a deposition for Bob and Diane's situation, I went in told my little side of the story. You know. Um, you know, on behalf of you know, Bob's side, because I knew the truth. I knew we all knew right. it wasn't what he, what she alluded it to be. So, um, Di uh, Janice did as well. But Holly, on the other hand, she didn't want to have anything to do with it. The other model, she did not want to have anything to do with it. She refused to do a deposition or go in and talk. And Bob kind of resented that, <clears throat> and that kind of built over a while up into some really kind of backlash for Holly and. It started to manifest when Bob was asking her to do or say certain things for, uh, about Diane and things, and she just wouldn't do it, wouldn't say it, and trying to make paint a real bad, nasty, ugly picture of Diane. Well, Diane proved to do that herself, so mm -hmm. nobody needed to do that. <laughs> but after a while, Holly got put on the burner on the show, like behind the cars and this and that, and they, she, they, she was being shown less and less. Oh, so it was strategic. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was strategic. strategic. I'm telling you, now when I look back and I think about it, especially when I was writing the book, and I had to do a lot of research myself because, you know, this is my memoirs, my story as I knew it, but some things I didn't know. I can't very well write about something I didn't know about, but, of course, I could allude to it, and that kind of helps tie some of the loose ends right. together in the story. Of course, the book reads like a novel. Right. You know, it's very exciting. It's a roller coaster <laughs> ride and everything. But actually, uh, Holly got put off the show. They're saying that she retired at an early age. She was not ready to go. So when she got let go unjustifiably, it started a whole other lawsuit between Holly and Diane Hallstrom, Park Barker, and he suing her, and she was suing him. So that went on for a while, and poor Holly ended up kind of losing everything because it's very tough to fight. CBS, right. Bob Barker, The Price is Right, you know, they got all that money coming in, and you yourself as an attorney, you know, you guys are high. Those fees are high, girl. What's up with that? You ain't helping us out here. Huh? What's up? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that, again, started the snowball effect because we had to give deposition 
again for Holly Hulse from Bob Barker's situation. And we told the truth as we knew it, but it wasn't the truth as Bob wanted us to hear it. So uh, without getting into detail, it resulted in me, Janice, and three other women assistants who had been there over 15, 16, 17 years being let go unjustifiably one day. Very, very surprising to us. To me, I had been there 10 years. Of course, I was upset. They offered Janice and I another job doing some model search or whatever and had given us given us contract. Of course, Bark was nowhere around. But Janice, she was there 29 years. She started on the show the same time Barker did. 29 years. How do you just let somebody go right. and not say any goodbye to your fans, not say goodbye to the cast, the crew, anybody just one last day of, of work when we were getting ready to go on hiatus, just like almost a piece of paper saying, here, you're not going to be a Barker Beauty anymore. I mean, it was devastating enough to me. And Janice, I mean... Come on, Barker, right. how do you do that? He swore up and down. He had nothing to do with it, but he was the executive producer. Come on. Right. So yeah, I talk about that in the book, obviously, and, you know, a lot of things, the good times and things that just happened, transpired, and a little bit of haunting on the show. If there's ghosts in the whole area <laughs> there, we have had certain things fall down on us and, you know, some trauma and drama there, but uh, it's, it's very fun. The book is, everybody who's read it, has given me a good review and love it, like it, especially people that know me, because I say, be brutally honest. I want to know. And uh, they just, you know, maybe a few little things here and there, but for the most part, they were it's honestly. It's a good book, yeah. yeah it, as, as well as a lot of people know me or thought they knew me, who knew, who really know me, right? still were kind of excited about some aspects of my life and things they didn't know about, so... It, it was just a great journey writing that book. I, I'm, I love it. I Backstage at The Price is Right, Memoirs Over Barker Beauty. Mm -hmm. And where can they purchase the book? Can you let us? Um, it's on my website. I prefer you go there because I get more money. Okay. <laughs> so it's <laughs> KathleenBradley.tv. That's it, KathleenBradley.tv. Or you can go on Amazon or Barnes & Noble. It is also available there. I am in the, the process right now. It's getting um, going to ebook. So I'm going to have electronic book. So, uh, and the, uh, already I'm doing a second edition because there are a few corrections I need to make in the mm -hmm. book, and uh, color photos now. The other book had this original copy has uh, black and white photos, which I still kind of like. You know, right, kind of right, gives right, you that right. nostalgic right. kind of feel and everything. <laughs> and some pictures look better in black and white, but for the most part, you know. The Price is Right has always been very colorful scenery and set and everything. And I think the people and viewers who watch the show will always kind of look at it and see, you know, color. When mm -hmm. you, it's very vivid color and, and very high energy, just a lot of fun. Great show to work for. I'm telling you, it was just wonderful. I'm so happy to hear that outside of, you know, the other stuff that was going on. But Kathleen Bradley... Dot TV to purchase the book. Now, I want to also get into your iconic role on <laughs> the, one of my favorite movies is Miss <laughs> mm. <laughs> Parker. That's right. <laughs> Friday, Miss Parker. How was that? How was that filming? Wow. You know, that again. You know, how, how, I'm so blessed. Right. I mean, I've got two great claims to fame, <laughs> I must say. And, and it's odd, though. A lot of people don't know or hadn't known that I was the same person. They didn't know, they either knew me from The Price is Right for being that black lady, I didn't have a name, <laughs> that black lady on The Price is Right. I'd go in the grocery store, mama, mama, that, that's that black lady on The Price is Right, Price is Right, whatever, and they'd ask me, I'm like, yes, I am the black lady on The Price is Right. And then a lot of guys and stuff, people walk in, are you Miss Parker, aren't you Miss Parker? Da, da, da. So now, you know, uh, my whole popularity is increasing, especially with social media and everything, and people are tying them together, especially with the book and what have you. So, you know, I'm getting a lot of more people coming up to me and walking up to me. But, you know, the guys, the boys, the men just love them some Miss Parker, honey. Miss pa Hey, Miss Parker. Hi, boys. <laughs> they do. I was at the ESPYs. Um, uh, the other night, the one that Drake hosted, he was talking about phenomenal. Drake, yeah, I have to give him. kudos up to my boy. He's a nice person, such a great guy. I had an opportunity to meet, to meet him a couple of weeks ago, and I was very in impressed with his presentation. He did excellent. But I'm um, saying that to say, uh, I went back, uh, my daughter and I, Cheyenne, 
were uh, at the show. But af the after party, you know, they had all those athletes there, the football teams, the basketball, and whatever. And it's just incredible. Those guys, when they found out who I wa was, you know, they were just, I mean, they just lose it. They lose it. Like, oh, my God. Oh, man. Miss <laughs> oh, 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 man. Come on, can I take a picture? I mean, they're taking pictures with me. I'm, like, looking at some of these guys and stuff, Matt Burns, a whole bunch of people when I play golf. And they're, like, coming up to me, hugging me. When I'm, you know, that, that makes me feel good. Though. I but know it does. I love it, though. I know it does. <laughs> it is really great. I love I love that movie. I watch it to this day, yep. and and you're absolutely right. It's great to have two, you know, The Price Is Right and that iconic role on yep. Fridays that nobody forgets. Nope. And nope. that's so important. Absolutely not. Yes. yes. So I want to go into the other things that you do as well besides those two. You're also a motivational speaker, right? But you know, but before we do that, yeah, let me say I have been really blessed once again with a great sponsor. Yes. And I do have to mention Peter Nygaard. <laughs> Nygaard Slims, he's really helped me because the book, uh, I'm self-published actually, my husband and I, we have our publishing company called The R Group Publishing, mm. and independent publishers are becoming very, very popular right now because it's very difficult to get a book uh, deal, I don't care who you are, for the most part, they're right. just not giving the monies out like they used to. So my very good friend Peter Nygaard, I approached him with a little proposal, and so the thing is he's helping me underwrite my book tour and some of the expenses, and all I have to do, which is the easy thing, mm -hmm. is wear Nygaard Slims. I don't know if you can see these pants. But well, look. we got the camera right here, oh, the camera. yes. Okay. Uh, I make, sure I show Am I right make sure you slow show them pants. Am I in the right place? Look at the ribbing on. I mean, you know, all this stuff right here. They make you feel good at home. To a show. They have different colors. Different make sure styles. you don't make sure yeah. you don't go out of out of frame here. Oh, oh. Capri. Oh. There you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there <No>. it is. <laughs> mm -mm, girl. The Kathleen great, is really hilarious. Great. I love it. I've been it. wearing these so much. I think I'm wearing these. <laughs> I love them. I love my Nygaard Slims. I love them. Okay. NygaardSlims.com. And you can get them at Dillard's. <laughs> Go to Dillard's. If there's a Dillard's in your area, I'm going to be uh, partnering with Dillard's to... Uh, Go out and do book. <laughs> Our engineer is classy because <laughs> that is classic. <laughs> doing, doing my book, my book signing at Dillard's. Right. Probably in Atlanta and in Ohio and wherever they are, I will be there. Wonderful. I thank you for that. That was. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Oh, you got some. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> you all right? Uh huh. I'm all right. So I want to go into your, because um, maybe many people don't know, you're also an inspirational speaker, motivational speaker yes, as well. I am. So you talk about, you know, personal stories of success, failure, persistence, hard work. And tell us a little bit about some of your, you know, personal stories that you can share. Maybe one or two. Well, you know, I talk about my journey, basically, because there are so many young ladies out there that want to be in the show business, want to be in this, want to be a model, want to do this or that. You know, and it's wonderful and great to want to be that, but you have to also prepare yourself, be ready. Um, take classes if you want to be a model, take some instruction to classes if you want to get in the acting profession, you know, go to journalism uh, classes, schools. And there are all, all so many ways you can now online, once again, social media, and you can stay at home and literally get on your computer and learn courses and learn about things in social media. Uh, uh, Google, they have a lot of good classes and different things. But the thing is, I, I like to uh, talk to young ladies, especially in high schools, college as well and not just young ladies but you know women in general of course since I'm a woman I have an affinity <laughs> uh, and you know for that there's so many different subjects though that I like to talk about but basically empowerment and just you know perseverance and just you know like if I can do it you can do it right and no matter what you look like there's all kind of people race uh, and our skin tone color from high yellow to the medium to chocolate to 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 burnt brown whatever you know right. it doesn't matter what you look like your hair everything's more acceptable now you know your natural normal hair your natural look whatever because people want to have folks of our color to be more recognizable sometimes right because one thing, I've had a little issue in time in my life coming through the entertainment industry where my hair, I didn't look black enough. 
Mm. I didn't look black enough. So that was the issue and problem. And sometimes people say, well, you know, especially in the music videos and stuff now, they have a lot of stereotypical lighter skinned women, pretty long hair. Da, da, da. That's, what, that's what they kind of look for and go for now. But I think things are changing a little bit back to a, a, a mixed kind of a, here, this woman looks like that, this girl right. looks like that. But a lot of times in commercials, they want you to have some natural, curly, kinky, what kind of looking hair, darker skin. So people can't say, oh, we do have an African-American in this commercial or a whole family. Or, whereas people would look at me and say, oh, are you black? Are you Hispanic? Are you whatever? You know, unless right. I'd say something, open my mouth, then they'll know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's black. All right. Mm. But I do, I, it's just, you know, I get out there and I have a whole different approach. Yes. And I'm very approachable. And I'm relating to the young girls as, you know, hey, you have to have respect for yourself. You do not let those young men disrespect you. Don't feel like you have to give up something. You date a guy, you can be with a guy. You don't have to give in to them until you're ready. Respect yourself, you know, protect yourself. And um, just kind of know what you want to do in life. Think about it. Go to the newspapers. Look at and, and see classified ads. What people are offering money for or jobs. You know, and don't limit yourself. You can be an engineer. You can be an attorney. You can be a doctor. You can be a lawyer. Okay, yes, I'm in the entertainment business. That's what I do best. But, you know, you can stretch out. Think ahead. Have somebody help plan. Had you plan to do whatever you want to do? You can, you know, there's scholarships out there for all kind of things. Sometimes, you know, I just want them to broaden their horizon or their scope. Yes. To see, go where no young lady has gone before. You know, it is all open and available and bring yourself up out of whatever environment you think that is, you know, drawing or holding you back because it's not an excuse anymore. I love that. And to book you for speaking, they can go to KathleenBradley.tv as well. That's, yeah, they can go there and book me. I need some booking. Okay. You better get me before my <laughs> price goes up because the price is right right now. Okay. <laughs> Funny. Uh, and before we wrap up, I would like to sh at, to ask you, what else are you doing? What's what new projects you have? Oh, you know what? Yes, I, girl. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> this is my book. I mean, my magazine. <laughs> I am on the front cover. It's called OF, but it's really out front magazine. And my good friend Leroy, Spidel Leroy, he was editor. I've actually been on on the uh, cover of this magazine twice before. So this is my third time, and it's really Nice. Here's some photos of nice. uh, me and the whole nice story inside, talking about the book and what have you. And it's a great little. Here's me and Della Reeves mm -hmm. and me and Johnny Gill. <laughs> He's my new best friend. <laughs> he bought one of my books. He did. We were at a golf tournament actually, and um, and I know Bobby Brown and Ra Ralph Tresvant too. But all of them bought books when I was at this golf tournament. It was for charity, you know, and the celebrities. And, and Johnny bought one. And, I, you know, it's like $25, $30. Depends if you went hard or soft. And he gave me a $100 bill. <laughs> I said, oh, man, I don't have change for this. He said, oh, I'll just keep it. I, well, I didn't ask him again. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and the prize was right there. Yeah, girl. <laughs> so that's my story. Johnny Gill paid $100 for my book. See, it's good. Well, I thank you so much for being with me this morning. And you are truly phenomenal and hilarious. Thank, thank you for you. giving me a great laugh this morning. And again, they can find you on Kath Kathleen Bradley TV. And where can they find yeah, you dot on Twitter? Dot TV. And where can oh, they yeah. Find but you know, um, let's see. I have to thank my daughter and my, my kids all helped me set up all my accounts. But my um, Instagram is... Kathleen Bradley underscore Mrs. Parker. Yeah, <laughs> Kathleen Bradley underscore Mrs. Parker. And my Twitter is Kathleen Bradley without a Y. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me why. <laughs> Don't ask you mm -hmm. why. Okay. Somebody else has my name, but I need to be certified, and I'm working on that. You're working but on that. You'll still be able to find me. Plus, on my website, it takes you to uh, all of my social media uh, little icons down there, and Facebook, Kathleen Bradley, my fan page. So like me. Like, like me. me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for being with us this thank morning. Thank you. And you're a phenomenal woman oh, yourself. Thank you so thank much. thank you for allowing women and people to be able to express themselves and come on your show and talk about life in general. 
And hopefully we help somebody and today and absolutely, made a difference. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much. And thank you again for watching us and being with us on Black Hollywood Live. Uh, once again, I'm your host, Ashita Andre, and I look forward to inspiring you next week. Maria Menounos, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, Kevin Undergaro, and the entire BHL crew, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African-American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I'm your BHL announcer, Scipio. Instagram me at Planet Scipio. Thank you for tuning in. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals. Thanks for watching Black Hollywood Live on YouTube. For more in depth interviews and news, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion in the comment section below here. See you soon, everyone. Bye.